my name is Gabriel De Silva, and today I'm going to be presenting to you my master's project that I completed last year. And what my master's project was about was about digital twins and virtual reality. So I'm sure a lot of you have the question of what is a digital twin? Um, well, to explain that to you, I just need to give you some context. So for those that don't know, we have had four industrial revolutions that started a couple of centuries ago. The first one was when we invented steam power and mechanization and things like the weaving loom. Uh, the second one happened in the late 1800s, uh, the second industrial revolution where we started with mass production, assembly lines, and we introduced electrical energy. The third one, which was uh, more recently in the late 1960s, uh, was where we introduced things like automation and computers and electronics to actually increase and better industries. Um, now, the most recent one that in the one that we're currently in is the fourth industrial revolution. And that has introduced things like cyber physical systems or the Internet of Things and has relied and focused heavily more on networks and the interlinking of different components. So now where does digital twins fall into this? Well, I'm sure a lot of you can guess that it falls into the fourth industrial revolution. Um, so a digital twin is essentially a virtual representation of a physical model. Now, what that means is, for instance, if you have a car, a car is your physical model or physical twin, and the digital twin then perfectly represents or virtualizes that physical car. So if the car is going 60 kilometers an hour uh, down a road and the speedometer says it's going at 60, then the digital twin also says that the car is going at 60. If the engine's at 100 degrees Celsius on the physical car, then the, physic then the digital twin, the car also has an engine of 100 degrees Celsius. So the important thing of the digital twin and the main aspect of it is that it can receive data from a physical model and update the virtual model with this data. Um, and this happens in most cases as an, at a near real-time speed. Um, so you can have almost all the latest information on your physical model represented virtually. And what this allows the digital twin to do is that it can then make informed and intelligent decisions for the physical model. So if we go back to the car example, if your engine is at 100 degrees Celsius and it's rising and eventually going to overheat, then the car, the physical car will be overheating and this, will, this information will then be sent to the digital twin and the digital twin will be able to see, okay, the engine is overheating. So what factors can we put in place to mitigate that and to actually stop the engine from overheating? It can then make those decisions and send it back to the physical uh, car and that could be like, okay, introducing more coolant into the radiator or whatever it is. So the digital twin is able to work with the physical twin and actually make decisions that are beneficial for the physical model. This doesn't just stop at a single car. You can also, or a single model like a car, you can also have a digital twin of entire factories or um, campuses like we'll, we'll see later. So now the next question is, what is a, what is, why did I say that? But what is virtual reality? Um, and I'm sure most of you know exactly what that is, but virtual reality is exactly what it says it is. It is a reality that can be represented virtually, that we are able to enter and then interact with um, the reality using things like a headset or controllers to control aspects in the reality. Uh, virtual reality is mostly used in the gaming industry, um, but it's being more introduced into things like the scientific environment. Um, the technology has developed rapidly over the years, which has allowed it to become more easily available um, than it was uh, a decade ago. This, easel, easily, uh, this easy availability of the technology is also the reason why it's moving away from the gaming industry to other environments. So with virtual reality, there's new capabilities that are being added to it all the time. For instance, you now start to get things like haptic feedback. You get gloves where if you grab onto something in virtual reality, you can actually feel yourself grabbing uh, that thing in virtual reality, but you can feel it in your hand. Uh, you also get like body suits that you can feel what's going on in the environment. So the ceiling for virtual reality is essentially almost, I would like to say almost limitless, but not really. Um, but it's very high because you can 
configure and create your virtual environment to whatever you want it to do. Um, and you can use it however you want it to. So now what about my research? How, where do these two things fit in? So my research had two main aims. The first one was to figure out if digital twins and virtual reality can actually be used together. And if they can be, what does that look like? And is that actually a beneficial um, relationship? The second one was to figure out if virtual reality can actually be used to enhance the data visualization process. So like I said, virtual reality, you can uh, create different environments and display many things. So can you actually use virtual reality to display and analyze data effectively? So how this was achieved was through a case study. So I had to go and create a digital twin and virtual reality system uh, to answer those two questions. And the case study that I had was to create a digital twin and virtual reality system of the Stellenbosch campus, where you as a person could go into the virtual reality environment and you could essentially fly around the Stellenbosch campus and say, okay, I want to visualize the energy data for this specific building or these group of buildings. So my focus was mainly on the energy data that's collected for various buildings within um, Stellenbosch. So let me show you a demo of that uh, system. Just before I play this video, um, just bear in mind, my focus was on just creating the systems. So the visuals and the UI isn't necessarily the best. Uh, so yes, please just bear that in mind. But as you can see here, this is a map of Salamosh. And with this menu, you can select what building buildings energy data you actually want to visualize. So in this case, we're going to be looking at the mechanical engine, mechanical engineering building in Stellenbosch. Um, so after you've selected the mechanical engineering building, click next, and it says, okay, what elements would you like to view? These elements change depending on the level that you view. And then you say you want to visualize the latest energy data. So it populates the energy reading, and then you can fly over to the um, reading and actually visualize it. You can change the scale of it, which you'll see later when more, in, when more data points are populated, how that actually affects it. Um, then I want to visualize the entire campus, including all the groups of buildings, the uh, buildings themselves and the campus as a whole. So this is the latest energy data for the entire or most of the campus. Um, the green ones, the green columns are for specific buildings. The blue ones are for groups of buildings. And then the red one is for the entire campus. So you can see that you can actually decide how um, high or what the scale of the buildings you want. But not only that, can you visualize the latest data, you can also visualize a range of data. So in this case, I want to visualize the average energy data from the 20th of May to the 24th of May, um, the average daily usage. So if you click next, then you, it looks pretty much the same as the previous one. But what the difference is now is if you click play, then you can actually cycle through the different uh, display points, uh, the different data points. Um, and this just aids the visualization process and it allows you to pick up trends a lot easier and you can actually get down to a very fine detail um, and actually get closer to the buildings to see what the trends look like. Um, so that's just a, a brief demo of the actual system. So what were the conclusions of my research? Well, the first one is that digital twins and virtual reality can actually be used together. Um, digital twins offer something that other methods don't, where digital twins consistently have up-to-date data um, and have processed the data and have filtered the data and have drawn conclusions, not conclusions, but insights into the data already, which can then be immediately transferred to virtu virtual reality. So the latency associated with transferring information into virtual reality is a lot lower. This allows a person to actually visualize um, data in a near real-time fashion. For instance, like I said, you can have a digital twin of an entire system. So imagine you're a plant manager and you now enter virtual reality and you've got this image of your whole plant and you can actually see in real time what each of your components are doing. So if you want to see a generator, you can go to the generator object in virtual reality and see, okay, it's busy doing X. The other thing is that virtual reality really shows promise in aiding the data visualization process. So other research showed that using virtual reality, you can actually come up with better, uh, or you can identify trends and make decisions a lot quicker in virtual reality than using um, other methods. 
So the reason for that is that virtual reality is a 3D environment. And us as humans are used to a 3D environment and that's how we interact every day. So if you are placed into a 3D environment with data, you can actually visualize and navigate that data more naturally to what you're used to. And that allows you to come up with better conclusions for the data and actually visualize it better. The last thing was that this topic of digital twins and virtual reality is actually massive because it's then worth exploring other reality shaping technologies like augmented reality. For instance, going back to the plant manager example, if the manager of the plant has a augmented reality glasses, then they can actually go to the generator in person and see what the information on the generator is. The reason why you would, might want to use something like virtual reality is that a plant manager in Germany can go and go to that same generator in virtual reality in a generator that's placed in South Africa. And that then allows more freedom in a sense to get experts from in, international um, places to actually come and fix problems. Uh, so this does open the door for more research into reality shaping technologies and how digital twins can actually go and uh, aid the data visualization process uh, with those reality shaping technologies. Thank you.